On me, on me. He's put, they're pushing. They're pushing left, pushing left. My, my left, my left. They're on top, they're on top of me right now. They're push, push, push in. That, they're on, they're on me, they're dead. Too low, too low. He's cracked, he's down, he's down. He's push, 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 Every time, Nick. The gaming chair. Still based matchmaking. Bull you hungry? Claire, can we get some meatloaf? Drew, you know, thanks. I think I'm okay. I uh, I had a bite right before I came over. Thank you, though. You sure? You know what? I will have some meatloaf. Let's have some meatloaf. You want some? I knew. I knew. Claire, the meatloaf. We want it now. What is she doing? I never know what she's doing back there. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Using video games to train for real life, how stupid can you be? And I'd agree with you 99% of the time. But today, we're going to talk about that 1%. You see, gaming has its limitations, and in the past, it's been a pretty awful idea to, to use gaming for any sort of reference as to how things work in real life. Obviously, dolphin diving and 360 no-scopes and sprinting to jump around corners and shoot people does not work super well in real life. Slide canceling and head glitching, okay, those can be real things, but for the most part, there's basically no correlation between games and real life. But they do influence perception, and that is a big deal because the next generation is playing video games, and based on what they see, they're gonna kinda have some visualizations as to how things should go. And this can be a good or a bad thing. But they do influence perception, for better or for worse. And at the end of the day, they are absolutely teaching the next generation uh, what this stuff looks like. Again, for better or for worse, but all because of one thing, and that is the power of visualization. Take the story of Colonel Hall, for example. He was a POW in Vietnam for seven years, and not just in any place, but in the Hanoi Hilton. Every single day he dealt with starvation, dehydration, sleep deprivation, and torture. But every day he played a mental game of golf in his mind. See, back home, that was his favorite game. That was his passion. And every day, whenever he was in captivity, he went through the motions of feeling what it felt like to, to put on his, his outfit for golf, to get out there on the greens, to set up a tee, to get the perfect swing. And he mentally visualized a perfect game of golf every single day for seven years. And upon his release, after he had been uh, back in America for only 100 days, or only about six weeks, he went to the golf course. He only weighed about 100 pounds, and he shot a near-perfect game of golf. This is the power of visualization. If you take two people who have never shot before, one of them grew up playing first-person shooters, one of them did not, you will notice a very stark difference in their ability to learn quickly. For example, the person who never played video games, who never played first-person shooters, explaining to them how to line up a front sight and you know your two rear sights, it can be complicated. It can be hard to get them to think like that and to be able to shoot well, but the gamer, He's done that hundreds of thousands of times. They know exactly what it looks like to aim down iron sights already. They also understand that if you have a red dot on your rifle or your gun, you're not staring at the dot. You're looking at the target and you're just putting the dot over it. So this is the power of visualization. And for better or for worse, the next generation is picking up things. And what gaming does is it can help people pick up these basic simple Practice. concepts in real life a little bit faster if they're done right. So today we're not gonna talk about Call of Duty because honestly that thing is a hot pile of trash, especially the newest one. Today we're gonna talk about the new game Ready or Not, which has been out for a while but just got its uh, first official like full release. And the reason why Ready or Not is so cool is not because it's a CQB game, although it is a CQB game, but it doesn't necessarily teach you CQB, so this is not a CQB video. What this game does really well is help people figure out how to work as a team, how to communicate, and how to move. And that is what we're going to talk about today. How we use Ready or Not to spin people up, and when we can't be in person, how can we train and how can we start to understand each other a little bit more so when we do get together, that teamwork is darn near perfect. Ready or Not is a great tool to catch uh, new people up to speed with your and your team's SOPs. So take my cousin, for example, who's never done any of this stuff, and look at how quickly he picks this stuff up so that whenever he comes and he does this stuff in person or we go to a Milsom event, he's pretty well spun up. 
You never want to open up a door while you're standing in the middle of it because that's the first thing that someone's going to shoot and they can typically shoot through the door. So you're always going to want to be to one side or the other, either reaching across, but obviously the safest place to open up a door from is on the, uh, the doorknob side, right? So if I'm just doing this by myself, I'm going to throw open this door. And have you ever heard of pying? Yeah, so like, I'm sure you're pretty familiar with that, just doing first person shooters. Right now I have, and I'm gonna use my white light to like kind of show you the edges. You can see on the floor where my light goes in, right? Like there's like a little line there. So right now that's all I can see. And I'm, I'm just gonna bite off more of that pie, scanning for threats or good guys as I come around. You can do it fast, you can do it slow. Typically you do it as fast as you can go and still process what you're seeing, if that makes sense. So if you go so fast that you can't, you're moving faster than you can react to something you see, usually a no-go. So you're only, you usually take it just like the speed at which you could react to something if you saw it. When we're set and we're ready, Curtis is gonna give me some sort of like, see what he's doing with his muzzle? He's wave. it's called a muzzle wave. That's telling me in a silent way, hey, I'm ready to go. In real life, we can just do a head nod. Um, if you're used to working with dudes, sometimes as soon as everyone's stacked up, you don't need anything. You can just tell them to go. Uh, so give me that wave. I'm going to throw open the door for him. Yep, that's all it is. There you go, all right. Cool. Uh, the only thing I would remind you of, um, and this game will punish you for it, which is great because you get punished for it in real life too, go ahead and come back out here, is um, if you have the room, now not all, not all houses or hallways give you room for this, but if you have the room, make sure you don't stick your muzzle through the threshold. So like, notice how, um, here like stand like right here. You'll notice if I do it like this, how my gun is already through the threshold, right? Yeah. So if there was a bad guy over here or over here, he could see the tip of my gun pointing through, right? It would give yeah. it away. So if you have the space, um, you know, take a little bit wider of a, so of a step so that your gun doesn't poke through the threshold yet. Um, if you're going fast and everything, like dude, like sometimes you can't, and sometimes you don't have the space. If you don't have the space um, to do that without poking your muzzle through, that may be another reason why you just want to do it dynamic. If yeah. I can't, if I can't get around this doorway without poking my muzzle through, then maybe I should just get in. Yeah, just surprise them getting fast. Yeah. This game is also a great way to get on the same page with your SOPs, your terminology, all the phrases and vocabulary that you use. You know, I've played with a lot of different people and there's different groups around the Tennessee area and we've all taken training from different That's people. So we know a lot of the same concepts, but we call them different things. And we also have different ways of going about doing stuff. So being able to hop into a game and as you're like walking through the woods or you're walking up to a house and you have a formation or you have a stack, as you start to call these things out and let's say a teammate calls something one way and you can pause and just be like, hold on a second, dude, what do you mean by that? And then you can try it and you're like, oh, okay, I understand that concept. I just call it something different. So it helps you guys get on the same page with what you're doing and what you're saying. Yeah, just go like, yeah, stop. Okay. So if he sees you, right, and he wants to engage you right now, and I'm the two man and I'm doing my job, I'm going to walk in this room and then I'm going to walk just like this. Now, he's trying to shoot you and look where I'm right yeah, right in the way. So if he doesn't if he doesn't get deep enough, quick enough, then it creates I'm like I'm essentially if I don't realize what's happening and we just flow in, depending on the timing, it could set up a pretty shitty situation where either he doesn't shoot or I'm going to catch some rounds from him. That is like the biggest friction point that I've seen uh, in situations like that. 
One of my biggest frustrations with doing anything with a group is how I, I often see guys doing nothing. You'll be in you'll be in a line, you'll be in a formation, and you know the the guy in the front, he will be he'll be looking front. The dude behind him will be looking right. The dude behind him will be looking left, and the guy behind him is just kind of like looking down at his feet, doing nothing. This game punishes you for not finding work. It punishes you for not covering all of the angles. And one of the biggest things that we notice with guys who hop into this game for the first time or who don't have a lot of training in real life is they're not constantly looking for work. So that is one of the biggest things that we push is always be looking for a place to cover, to, to get your muzzle in somewhere, to, to observe an area that no one else is looking at. It teaches people to constantly be looking for a way to help their team and not just being a bump on the log. Okay, so this is a great example. Uh, there's a lot of guys uh, stacked up on this door trying to make entry. I was looking at a different area, but I get in, there's a lot of people there, so like, what can I do? Well, I'm, a, I'm gonna look at this door, I'm gonna pull security. Again, here in this hallway, a lot of people in there doing a lot of different things. No one's pulling security. Well, I'm gonna go check behind us. Sure enough, bad guy. Anytime you're shooting a lot, bad guys will come in behind you. So, again, security, bad guy. Right here, Alden's plating me to my right. Takes a dude out, saves my life. And that's why we hold security. One of the really cool parts about this game is how accurate all the weapons are. So if you go into the gun builder, um, you can choose all sorts of different things from ARs to, or from rifles to sub guns to shotties. And, uh, and then you can build them out the way that you want. The only thing that you can't do is you can't put a laser and a light on your gun at the same time, which is totally unrealistic. But one thing that is realistic is the Sonoran Desert Institute. If you're looking to figure out how to become an armorer or a weaponsmith, uh, SDI uh, has you covered. It's a great place and you probably see it in the comment section. Uh, tons of dudes get their degrees from SDI and, uh, and, and we love those dudes. They're awesome, so check it out. Sonoran Desert Institute. This game also teaches you the importance of structure assessment. So when you walk up to a building and, uh, and let's say you go inside and you see a team of guys stacked up on a wall, they're, 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 they're throwing the door open, maybe they're doing a slow pie around it or they're throwing a flashbang in. And then you notice, oh, it's a drywall. Rounds can come through that like butter. So why are you taking it so slow? Why aren't you going dynamic instead of being so passive about it? This game will punish you for not taking notice of what your environment is like and what the makeup of the walls are. So when we have a concrete structure like a school in the game or something like that, we can get away with going a little bit slower because we're con all the walls are covered. Whereas inside of a house, a, like a normal house, it's just like maybe some thin wood walls, some paneling, or some drywall. You will absolutely get smoked for going slow. Here we have a guy trying to make entry on a door. The rounds start coming through. Get a bang out. Bang out. And we take it fast. Push. No, left side, left side. Making noise on the outside of walls that you can shoot through. Yep. Bad idea. Doors are not covered. Door. For you or for bad guys. Charlie, I'm with you. Good. Trying to make entry. Rounds come through through a door. Again, there's a difference between cover and concealment. Right here we had uh, a firefight going off in an adjacent room. We had set up an L shape on this room. But they couldn't see deep into the room, and rounds were coming through, nearly hitting this helpless bystander, which would fail the mission or send you to jail in real life. Hey, hold what you got, if you can, because you're all are you all are getting pass throughs into a room with a civilian, and it's like going all over her. So if we go into the locker room, uh, we can mess with our kit and make ourselves look super awesome. Which you know, kit is a part of it. It's not the end all be all, but it is kind of important. So let's be real. Um, and if you're looking for kit, it's a great segue into an ad. If you're looking for a uh, cool kit and for like tested uh, equipment, Venture Surplus is a great place to check out. They're big sponsors of the channel. We love those dudes. They're solid people too. And uh, you can use the code clean civilian for 10% off everything at Venture Surplus and you know, get yourself some uh, legit stuff. I don't know if they have watches though. I don't, I don't know if they have gold watches. Um, 
and I probably shouldn't put that one on because that'd be like stolen valor. But uh, and they also don't have tattoos. But other than that, they're pretty solid. This also teaches you how to not communicate. <laughs> Uh, you can you can turn on a mod for this game and get like eight or nine dudes on your team Typically, it's like a max of five But when you start getting a bigger team and everyone starts talking You can't hear what your TL what your team leader is trying to say you can't like just the chaos That's going into your ears and everything's coming at you. It just makes it so that you can't function You can't Clear. listen and hear what's going on in Clear. the house You can't hear enemy movement. You can't hear like civilians crying and asking for help You also can't figure out like what are we supposed to be doing? because everyone's chatting. This game teaches you to shut up, which is a real thing in real life. When you're out working with dudes in the field or you're at a Milsom event or you're doing some sort of training, everyone wants to constantly like say what they're seeing. And even if it's nothing, they just chatter, 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 chatter. Hey, I got a bang. You got a shield up front? Yeah, we could do a bang. We could see to it. I guess we could, yeah, we could see to it or I got a breathing uh, shotgun. Maybe I should go up the middle, sir. Maybe I should go left, sir. Maybe you should shut up. Here we just have way too much chattiness. Uh, whoever's on the door, every person on the team, especially a TL, should know all the assets that they have at their disposal. They don't constantly need someone telling them, hey, I've got a flashbang, hey, I've got a wedge, hey, I've got a battering ram, hey, I've got gas. Like, no, you, you don't need that. If something is needed, it can be called for. You got a plant, you got a dead wall to your left. Uh, I got a bunch a of cubicles. Who is that? There's a violent cabinet. Oh, there's a high portion in this room that we're going to have Rolling to right. cover. Okay, okay I'm going, just, I'm going, I'm going. This is a great example of calling out useless information. Now, a lot of times when you're scanning through this door, you're calling out, oh, I want this, I see this, and I see this, and I see this, and none of those things matter. Voices inside? Uh, Voices inside? There's a door in front of me. Voices in my head. Team this, one. There's a window on the left. There's a wall on my right. I'm going to bang it. This could be your video. Yeah, bang it. Okay. High angle, low angle, high angle, low angle, go, go, go. Jesus. While we're talking about communication, this game is also a great opportunity to learn non-verbals. A head nod for me may mean something to another guy that has a different set of SOPs. Uh, a muzzle wave may mean one thing to me and something different to another guy. Uh, these little subtle non-verbal cues are also something that you can kind of put through the crucible and make sure that you and the other guys that you're training with, that you would normally train with in real life, are all kind of on the same page before you go and you actually hit up you know, a training or, a, or an FTX. One thing a lot of people don't think about is how their lights and lasers can be used as communication devices as well. So we'll sometimes shine the bottom of a floor to let our teammates know we're on the other side of it or we will use the beam or our lasers to shoot long so that if we are in that L shape, our teammates know where our intersecting fire will be. And it gives us an idea of like when to shift fire. One of my biggest complaints about video games is that, uh, especially first person shooters, is that typically you just kill everything in sight. Well, in this game, there's a lot of like helpless people or civilians that are around and you have to positive, positively identify threats before shooting them. Let it breathe, let it breathe. Oh, sh right to jail. You can't just like burn down a wall. No, there's only a bad guy behind that wall. Like you could hit a bystander and you fail the mission. So the game kind of punishes you for not doing your due diligence and scanning correctly. Any room? All right. Oh, I shot the wrong guy. Right to jail. Right away. I shot a civilian right in the head. I saw gunshots coming at me from like this body and I just shot the top of the head. Yeah. And so uh, one of the things that I've noticed with me is I tend to look at belt lines wherever I'm looking through stuff. Wherever I'm scanning, I'm always looking at the belt line because that's typically where someone will hold a gun or a gun will be down here. And that helps me pick up really quickly. Is that a bad guy or a good guy um, very fast? The other thing you pick up really quickly is that uh, just because someone looks like they are in an innocent, uh, you know, non-threatening position or posture doesn't mean they're actually not a threat. And so to maintain security on those individuals until you can, until someone can wrap them up, so to speak, or until you can confirm that this person is not a threat to me. Suspect outside to the left. Here we had a guy take shots at me through a window, shoot him a couple times, he complies. I hold security on him and have uh, my other teammates wrap around the back side of the building to get an L shape on him as well and to cuff him. I'm going, I'm going. All right. And in the process of that, he tries to draw. 
Wrong move. True. Up to the right. Here we have a school building. It was an active shooter. Uh, the guy surrenders, but tries to draw again. This guy we had an L shape on with two lasers pointing down on him, so we knew he was covered by the other team. We eventually closed the distance. Okay, he had not presented any threat at this point. We didn't see a gun or anything. We just thought he was an innocent bystander. And in the middle of the chaos, I call him over to me so that I can wrap him up. And he puts into a shot into the shoulder of my buddy. This game also teaches you that you can do everything right and still lose. And it provides a lot of great opportunities because you will lose more than you win on this game because it's so hard and the AI is so punishing. But it provides a really good opportunity after the game to talk with all the guys in the group like, hey, like what went wrong? And maybe it's like, oh, well, we did it textbook and we just got shot. But a lot of times it's like, oh, you backlit me or, oh, you didn't approach that door slowly and the enemies, the AI could hear you on the other side of the wall. Or, oh, you were like, you had your light on the whole time so they could see the movement of your character under the doorway. There's a lot of little things like that and the team that put this game together, um, they did a really great job of taking some training on their own to figure out like how do we make the AI as smart and as realistic as possible so that we can punish people for doing the wrong thing and so that they can learn from their mistakes. It's really cool after the fact getting to go back and watch all this stuff. Here, I was standing in the threshold. That's both my fault and the team on the door's fault. They threw the door open, I caught around. Here we had a guy who dropped his rifle when he was the only person holding a sector to pull out a flashbang. Sure enough, guy comes around the corner. Don't prep bang. Let's give it a restart. All right. Okay. Punish. Right here, I was not fast enough on the lead guy to cover his back. He caught rounds. Took a hard hit. I'm gonna be back at stack. Rest yep, of the night. you're good. Right here, we have over penetration. The guy on the left exposed himself without knowing how close he was to that corner. It's something that can happen easier in video games than in real life, where you kind of have a depth perception. But still, this review after the fact helps a lot. Um, we had a bad bang, and then me and Kenny were so focused on this, we just went straight in. Yep. Didn't, didn't check those two little tiny corners, and Kenny got deleted. Here we have a cluster of people. They, they meet a threat, and then everyone just clusters in, and it's just total chaos. Whenever we should just be getting as many muzzles into the fight as possible, and spreading out through the house, putting down bad guys. This unnerves me when we have multiple muzzles looking in a dangerous direction when other areas have not been cleared. First of all, they're shooting too close to each other. And then we have the blind spot over there that no one ever picked up. This was back clearing. We just went through an entire building, but we hadn't cleared all the exterior. And sure enough, dudes came into the area that we were previously at, just shot us in the back because we didn't do a good job of back clearing. And then we got hung up on the doorway whenever the, the guy who threw the bang tried to be the first one in, when typically the person that throws the bang backs off and is not the first guy in. Let's say, for example, you don't have a lot of buddies, but you still want to hop into a game like this. Can you even get anything out of it? Absolutely. In fact, I found out that the creators of this game actually went and took some uh, classes with Orion Training Group, and they used a lot of the stuff that they learned there to, um, to kind of um, mold your AI teammates. So if you go into a game solo, uh, your four other players that are on your team, you can kind of look at them and they're doing mostly the correct stuff. One of the things that they'll do when you stack them up on a door and you can choose if you want the stack left, stack right, or a split stack, um, they'll get out of the doorway before the door is thrown open because they, they understand that that's like a fatal funnel. Like when the door comes open, guns start shooting through the doorway. So there's just like a lot of little things that a solo player can pick up from watching what their AI teammates do. It's not perfect, but it is something that they can use to learn a little bit. When you've taken a lot of classes with experienced dudes, you tend to find out pretty quickly that there are no absolutes 
in the training world. There are a lot of very good principles you should pretty much always follow, but for the most part, there's never just one way to skin a cat. That's one of the cool things about this game is that I've hopped in with guys from all different kinds of backgrounds. Law enforcement, standard army, rangers, MARSOC, plenty of Green Berets from different groups, even a CAG guy, and they all tend to do stuff a little bit different. And I've been able to pick up on a lot of the different things that they do to kind of like figure out what works Works best and what works good in this situation and not in this situation so that's one of the cool training aspects of it and I would hope that if I was a training company I would definitely utilize this tool to reach more people or to, especially the gaming community and the younger generation it's a great tool to uh, kind of capture their attention and even give them some good information so Kevin fix everything that I just told him a lot of the consideration I take is making the two man's job of covering my six o'clock easier for him um, to increase my survivability. <clears throat> in my experience, I'm dealing with, uh, like in range regiment, you deal with guys that are like 19 years old. Um, so you, that's honestly, like I found that like a lot of the stuff we do, it's tailored towards teaching like very inexperienced people to operate and uh, do things at a pretty high level, like quickly. So that's kind of dummy proofing it to make the two man's job easier. Cause that two man might be a, like a, a guy who's only been there a week. So it's a little bit easier with, with minimal prep time to teach him the basics. And then, um, it, it just runs a little bit more smoothly. So what do you do with this video, right? You probably had some fun watching the intro, but what do you actually need to do now? Well, I would say hop into a game like this and get 1% better with your group of guys than you were yesterday. And if nothing else, it's still a great time with the homies. And don't let anybody knock that. One of the most uh, underrated things in this world is camaraderie. And modern gaming is camaraderie for grown men. I, I don't any way you spin it, that's what it is. We don't sit around and text each other all day. We don't have hour long phone conversations like women. We send memes back and forth on Instagram that if they ever saw the light of day, we'd all be canceled. And we play games at night or in our free time and we talk about life and we chat about life and we catch up. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it is very, very much underrated, the value of that. So hop in, get a little bit better, get closer, build your team. Uh, have some fun with the people that you do life with, and uh, thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you next time. Okay, go ahead and mirror it. <laughs> Just want to make sure we don't kill a civilian. Oh no! Oh, pop it! Pop it! Police, hands up! Oh, he ain't getting up. Take him. Turn around. Don't get up. Talk to element. Copy that, entry team. Notify. You got Morgan? And you know what?